Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa bihi nasta'in wa salli Allahumma wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam wa sallama tasliman kathira amma ba'd ayyuhal ikhwah wal akhwat respected brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek his divine aid we seek his assistance whom say if Allah azza wa jal guides none can misguide and whom say if Allah azza wa jal misguides none can guide I be witness that none is right to be worshipped except Allah Azza wa Jal alone, without any partner, and I testify that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his final Prophet and Messenger. As we proceed, inshallah, we continue our reading of the poem titled Al Manhaj Al Haq, the True Path, written by one of the great scholars of Islam, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Ibn Nasir Al Saidi. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon him. In this poem, he clarifies to us. The belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah with regards to the various aspects of belief, and particularly in these times, it becomes very, very important for a Muslim to revisit what the true belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is during these times of doubt and misconceptions. And so, this is an attempt, Insha Allah, to clarify in brief what. We say as Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah with regards to these various aspects of Iman. Uh, we stopped on the point, uh, or rather verse uh, 22, wherein the Shaykh, may Allah Azza wa Jalla mercy upon him, mentions, وَمِنْ قَوْلِ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ أَنَّ كَلَامَهُ هُوَ لَفْذُ وَالْمَعْنَى جَمِيعًا مُجَوَّدُ In this verse, he clarifies to us, what our belief is as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah with regards to the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what is our belief with regards to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so he says, وَمِنْ قَوْلِ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ أَنَّ كَلَامَهُ وَالْلَفْذُ وَالْمَعْنَى جَمِيعًا مُجَوَّدُ He says that amongst the beliefs of the people of truth is that Anna kalamahu is that um, his speech huwa lafdhu wal ma'na jami'an mujawwadu is that his speech is wording and meaning together when they come together it is perfected Taib. and so in this is an affirmation of kalam an affirmation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks that he subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in a manner befitting his majesty. He speaks when he wants and to whomsoever he wants, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is the belief of Ahl Sunnah, that Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks in a manner befitting his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks, he speaks besotin. He speaks in a voice which can be heard. And so the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is something which can be heard. And from the very from the very onset we affirm that the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is unlike that of his creation. And this is something which we established in our previous lessons that all of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is unlike that of his creation. The only way it resembles is in wording. But as for the true reality, if it comes to Allah's knowledge and Allah Azza wa Jal's descension, and Allah Azza wa Jal istiwa, He's rising above the throne, Subhanahu wa Taala. He's hearing, His sight, and so on and so forth. Then, it is unlike that of the creation. The only way it resembles the creation is in wording. Likewise, the speech of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is unlike that of His creation. And so we mention that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks, bisautin. He speaks with a voice, and this voice can be heard. It has been confirmed in the narration in Sahih al-Bukhari that the Prophet Muhammad said يُخْشَرُ اللَّهُ الْعِبَادِ فَيُنَادِيهِمْ بِسَوْتٍ يَسْمَعُهُ مِنْ بُعْدٍ كَمَا يَسْمَعُهُ مِنْ قُرْبِ That the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal, He will gather His servants and this of course refers to Al-Qiyamah Allah Azza wa Jal will gather His servants فَيُنَادِيهِمْ and he subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out to them. Be so with a voice. 
and this voice will be heard from a distance the same way it can be heard from close proximity there is no difference in this and so here we see that Allah Azza wa Jal will speak to his creation and this will be on Qiyamah and in this narration is an affirmation of sot of voice so we affirm that Allah Azza wa Jal he has speech subhanahu wa ta'ala and his speech is unlike that of his creation rather it is a speech which befits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa confirmed this in Surah At-Tawbah verse 6 where he mentioned وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ Allah mentioned that if one from amongst the mushrikeen they come to you seeking protection and they are not at war with you Allah Azza wa mentioned فَأَجِرْهُ then give him protection حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ then give him protection up until he hears the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this refers to the Quran and we will discuss what our belief is regarding the Quran so the Quran it is some of the speech of Allah azza wa jal hatta yasma'a kalam Allah this means the book of Allah so the Quran it is some of the speech of Allah azza wa jal and it is not all of the speech of Allah rather all of the previously divinely revealed books then this is also the speech of Allah like the Injil like the Torah like the Zabur like the Suhuf of Ibrahim and Musa the scriptures of of Ibrahim and Musa this is all the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal also from amongst the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that which Allah Azza wa Jal has spoken to his Malaika and that which he will still speak to his Malaika and to the people on Qiyamah this is all the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the speech of Allah azza wa jal is not just limited to the Quran but rather the speech of Allah azza wa jal it is many and um, it is various forms so regarding this the fact that the speech of Allah azza wa jal it is vast and it is a lot Allah azza wa jal said in surah to kaf verse 109 he says قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرِ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَّ كَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا طيب Allah Azza mentions that say O Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and proclaim to the people that say that if the ocean and the seas was ink for the words of your Rabb that if the ink or the sea it was ink for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la nafid al bahru then the seas would be depleted qabla an tanfadda kalimatu rabbi before the speech of Allah azza wa jal depletes the ink if it was the ocean the ocean would be depleted before the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come to an end and so the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is vast and it is many and so we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to whomsoever he wills and when he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala and our belief with regards to the speech of Allah azza wa jal ma'na it is wording it is made up of wording and it has meanings it contains meanings jami'an together Mujawadu. Together it is perfect. It does not resemble the speech of his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. The speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is not like the speech of his creation. And of course, like there is a difference between all of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, likewise, there is a difference between the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the speech of his creation. And this is something that people up until this day recognize and specifically in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu where the Quran was laid down as a challenge to his people and up until this very day the eloquence and the fasaha and the balagha of the Quran it was a challenge to the Arabs and the Arabs they were very very eloquent um, people and so 
there are some stories which relate to us that when these people who were opposed to al-Islam in the time of the Prophet when they recognized that this was not the speech of creation they then submitted in al-Islam one such story is the story of a person who was very averse to the call of the Prophet Muhammad and the habit of the Arabs in that time was that if their poetry was special and distinguished they would hang it up on the walls of the Kaaba and so one evening a man stood up and he attached some lines of poetry um, on the walls of the Kaaba and in this uh, poem he attacked the Prophet of Al Islam and so when the people woke up and they read the speech uh, one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi became extremely upset and he had this protective jealousy for the Prophet Sallallahu and Al Islam and so during that night he wrote Surah Al Rahman um, in its entirety and then he attached it to the walls of the Kaaba and when the people uh, anticipated a response in the form of a poem uh, the companions of the Prophet they refuted the speech with the Quran and not with poetry and it was mentioned that this man when he read Surah Al-Rahman and he was anticipating that he will be refuted or responded to with poetry he said Ma hadha qawlul bashar he said that this is not the speech of a human being and is mentioned that this person then embraced Islam why? because he identified that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be the speech of the creation طيب. it cannot be the speech of the creation وَهُوَ اللَّفْذُ وَالْمَعْنَى جَمِيعًا مُجَوَّدُ it is wording and meaning jami'an when it comes together it is mujawwadu it is perfected and this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so there is no dispute with regards to the fact that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the speech of human beings and for this reason Allah azza wa jal he laid down the challenge and he laid down this challenge to mankind as well as jinn kind and Allah mentioned قُلْ لَإِنِ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Allah mentions this challenge and he says that if all of mankind gathered imagine all of mankind came together with all of their advancement and all of their intelligence and all of their uh, specialities they came together and not just they came together the jinn also helped them and aided them to produce the like of this Quran they came together to produce the like of this Quran Allah mentions لا يأتونا بمثله they will never produce the like of it ولو كان بعضهم لبعض ظهيرا even if they support one another in this endeavor of producing the like of the Quran all of the creation came together they will never ever be able to produce the like of this and for this reason Allah Azza wa Jal laid this challenge down in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the Arabs of that time and this is a challenge which remains up until this very day and Allah says وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَدِعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Allah mentions that if you are in doubt with regards to what we have revealed to our servant Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meaning the Qur'an فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِن مِثْلِهِ then bring a surah the like of it one surah the shortest surah in the Qur'an Surah Al-Ikhlas bring one chapter the like of it and then call your witnesses to this if you are truthful and Allah refutes and he says فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا he says and if you are unable to do this and you will never ever be able to do this 
to produce a single chapter the like of the Quran. And so this challenge is something that was laid down in the time of Rasulullah addressing the Adams directly. And it is a challenge which remains up until this very day and people will never ever be able to challenge the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. And so when it comes to the Quran, in the next verse, Shaykh Abdul Rahman, he clarifies to us our belief. And he says, وَلَيْسَ بِمَخْلُوقٍ وَأَنَّ لِخَلْقِي بِقَوْلٍ كَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ إِذْ هُوَ أَمْجَدُ And the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what form it takes, it is uncreated. وَأَنَّ لِخَلْقِهِ And how can it be? How can it be possible that his creation have speech like the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while the latter is flawlessly superior? While Allah Azza wa Jal is flawlessly superior in all aspects, in all of his names, in all of his attributes. So how can it be that his creation can have speech like he is subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so this clarifies to us our belief with regards to the Qur'an. That the Qur'an, it is not created. And this is the belief of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-A'raf verse 50, 54 he says ala law al khalq wal amru Allah mentions and he says to him subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the creation and the command and yet Allah azza wa jal he separated between creation and the command so why because al amru refers to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is confirmed in other verses al amru ya it refers to the speech of Allah as Allah Azrael says, Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an ay yakula lahu kun fayakun. That when Allah Azrael wants anything to happen and to come into existence, He only says, kun fayakun. He says, be and it is. So that refers to the speech of Allah, His command. Um, another verse that affirms this is where Allah Azrael says, Inna mathala Isa inda Allah ka mathali Adam khalaqahu. مِن تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah says that the likeness of Nabi Isa with Allah Azza wa Jal is the likeness of Nabi Adam in terms of the creation. Nabi Isa was created without the intervention of a father. And uh, Nabi Adam was created in a special manner as well. He was created in the form of a man. So Allah mentions that the likeness of Nabi Isa with Allah Azza wa Jal is like the likeness of Nabi Adam. He created him from clay. Then Allah Azza wa Jal said to him, Be, and he was. And so this refers to the Amr. And this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we cannot accept the fact that the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created. Because had the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal been created, then it would have been permissible for us to accept the fact that there must be discrepancies and deficiencies in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because all of the creation, no matter the level of perfection which they reach, it is imperfect. It is imperfect. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu which we affirmed in our previous lesson, he is the leader of all the children of Adam and he is Sayyid al Mursaleen. He is the master and leader of all prophets. But yet the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not perfect in every sense of the word. What do we mean by this? We mean that the Prophet وسلم, he lived a life. But before the Prophet وسلم, came into existence, he was non existent. Then Allah Azza wa Jal brought him into existence and the Prophet lived. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he passed on. And the Prophet ﷺ experienced what he experienced in life. Type of grief and sorrow. And the Prophet ﷺ himself was harmed physically. And so this means that the Prophet ﷺ, in comparison to Allah Azza wa Jal, and to Allah belongs the greatest of examples, is imperfect. Because the Prophet ﷺ came into existence, he was created. And so, if we accepted the fact, and this is not our belief, that the Quran was created, it would be impermissible for us to accept 
that there is a form of deficiency in the Quran and so what is meant by this is, is that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uncreated and for this reason the people of knowledge they were very very severe against those people who said inna al qurana makhluqun those people who said that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is created the book of Allah azza wa jal is uncreated and we mentioned had we accepted this fact that would mean that there would be discrepancies and deficiencies in the Quran and so the correct opinion which is the opinion of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a is that the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is uncreated and part of the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Quran and so the Quran it is uncreated it is the uncreated speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the next verse verse 24 uh, Shaykh Abdul Rahman he introduces a new topic and this is the topic of divine pre-decree Al-Qadr and as we know this is an essential pillar of our belief as Muslims that we believe in the divine pre-decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each and every single thing has been predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this we are taught from small and this is a pillar of our Iman and this is confirmed in the hadith of Jibreel when he came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he said inform me about Iman inform me about Iman and the Prophet said Al-Imanu Iman is and took me Billah that you believe in Allah wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa al-yawmi al-akhir wa al-qadri khayri wa sharri that you believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers and the last day and that you believe in Qadr uh, the predestination the good of it and the bad of it so this is something that is essential to our Iman and a person is not considered to be a believer up until he believes in predestination that each and every single thing has been predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the story behind this narration is that Yahya ibn Ya'mar and Abdul Rahman ibn al humayri they came to Medina and they said if we met one of the companions of Rasulullah sallam, we would ask him we would ask him regarding this matter of Qadr and so look at the early generations that who did they refer their matters to they refer their matters to those who took directly from the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as we mentioned this is our methodology as Ahlu Sunnah that we follow the Prophet Sallallahu and we follow the interpretation of the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu and so Allah Azza wa Jal decreed for them that they meet Abdullah ibn Umar and so Yahya ibn Ya'mar said I accompanied him and my friend accompanied me as well and so I said Ya Aba Abdul Rahman O oh, father of Abdul Rahman and this means Abdullah ibn Umar they said indeed we met a people in Iraq they say la qadr there is no such thing as predestination and that matters happen haphazardly meaning meaning that there is nothing that has been predestined by Allah and there is nothing that has been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no such thing as a concept of Qadr. Now here we need to pay close attention to Abdullah ibn Umar's response. He says, Akhbiruhum anni bari'un minhum. He says, inform them that I am free from them. Wa annahum bari'un minni. And that they are free from me. That I have no part and I am not part of them and they are not part of me. Wallazi yahlif bi Abdullah ibn Umar. And that which Abdullah ibn Umar takes an oath by. He says, لو أنفق أحد مثل أحد ما تقبل منه حتى تؤمن بالقدر. He says, and he takes an oath by this. He says that if one of them was to give charity, the like of Uhud, which is a mountain in Medina, if one of them were to give 
the amount of uhud in the way of Allah and in charity ma tuqbal minhu it will not be accepted from them it will not be accepted from them hatta tu'mina bil qadr up until they believe in the concept of qadr and so to deny qadr it is disbelief and so he mentioned that these are not accepted up until they believe in qadr and this was the belief of the early generations of muslims and then he mentioned the hadith which is a well known hadith the hadith of jibril wherein jibril came to the prophet muhammad sallallahu in the form of a man and questioned him about islam and iman and he mentioned all of the various pillars of islam and iman and part of this he mentioned was what took me na bil qadr khayri wa sharri that you believe in qadr the good of it and the bad of it and so belief in qadr it is one of the pillars of this deen and it is one of the pillars of al iman so when it comes to this concept of qadr how do we understand qadr when it comes to the qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a small window has been opened up for the creation to understand this which means it is a very very complicated matter it is a matter which is beyond our intellect however there are certain principles which help us understand this very very important foundation and so when it comes to qadr a person is not considered to believe in qadr up until he affirms belief in four matters which is seen to be the pillars of qadr so the first pillar it is al ilm it is knowledge and this refers to affirmation of the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we affirm that allah azza wa jalla's knowledge encompasses all things that he subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is hidden from him not in the heavens not in the earth and that allah azza wa jalla knows everything that happened and he knows everything which will still happen subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is part of affirming allah azza wa jalla's name al alim that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al alim he is the all knowledgeable he has knowledge of absolutely everything the second pillar of qadr it is belief in the writing that each and every single matter has been predestined and has been written by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this allah azza wa jalla says wa indahu mafatih al ghaib la ya'lamuha illa huwa that with allah azza wa jalla belongs the keys to the unseen and no one knows it except him wa ya'lamu ma fil barri wal bahr and allah azza wa jalla knows what transpires on the lands and he knows what transpires in the depths of the seas wa ma tasqutu min waraqatin illa ya'lamuha wa la habbatin fi dhulumati al ardi wa la ratbin wa la yabisin illa fi kitabin mubin allah mentions that not a single leaf falls imagine a single leaf drops illa ya'lamuha except that allah azza wa jalla knows this no a grain in the darkness of the earth falls wala ratbin no any moist creation wala yabisin no any dry creation illa fi kitabin mubin except that this has been written in a clear book and so this refers to the kitaba the writing that each and every single thing has been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this has also been affirmed in many narrations from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said peace be upon him katab Allah maqadir al khalaiq qabla khalaq al samawati wal ard fi 50 alf sana wa kana arshuhu ala al ma reported in muslim that the prophet also said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wrote the decree of the creation before he created the heavens and the earth by 50000 years so 50000 years before allah azza wa jalla created the creation he wrote predestination he wrote what will happen in the creation and this happened 50000 years before allah azza wa jalla brought the creation into existence another narration that affirms this is the lengthy narration 
of Abdullah ibn Abbas, when the Prophet addressed him and said, Ya Ghulam, Ikhfadillah, Yahfadak, preserve the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will preserve you. Ikhfadillah, Tajidu, Tujahak, protect the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will find him in front of you. Up until the end of the hadith, wherein the Prophet mentioned, Rufi'ati al-Aqlamu wa Jufati suhuf that the pen has been lifted and the ink and the sheets have dried referring to the writing so this is something that we affirm also when it comes to Qadr that each and every single matter has been written down and this is in the Lawhil Mahfud the preserved tablet the third pillar of Qadr it is al mashia and this refers to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we believe that the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is supreme and it is above our wills and that the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it comes to pass and it is executed and that there is nothing that can avert what Allah azza wa jal wills whatever he wills happens and whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will does not take place each and every single matter it comes under his will subhanahu wa ta'ala about this Allah says وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ That you cannot will except that the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above your will. And this refers to al-mashi'ah, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something which we also affirm with regards to predestination. And the fourth pillar of Qadr, it is al-khalq. It is the creation. It is the creation that we believe that there is no creator besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he created absolutely everything Allah azza wa jal created absolutely everything each and every single thing besides Allah azza wa jal it is a creation from the lowest depths of the earth up until and including the arsh everything in the heavens and the earth Jannah and Nar, the Malaika, the Rusul, the Anbiya trees etc etc all of this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these things are under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa jalla has created absolutely everything there is no creator besides him and so when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu informed his companions about the fact that each and every single matter is predestined they said or some of them said Shall we then not depend upon that which was written for us? Meaning, just take a step back and let the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take effect. The Prophet said, I'malu kullu muyassari lima khuliqa lah. The Prophet said, do actions for each creation has been made easy for that which they were created for. So this means that we don't just take a step back when it comes to Qadr. We affirm these principles which we have mentioned these four pillars of Qadr and we believe that everything has been predestined but we still take action we still take action because it's part of belief in Qadr this is part of belief in Qadr and so we mentioned from the very onset that this chapter of Qadr it is something which many people do not comprehend and only a small window has been opened up for some of the creation to understand it it is not for us to delve into what this matter means but we should affirm it as mentioned um, in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an important matter um, when it comes to Qadr is that Allah Azza wa Jal we said he created absolutely everything which means he created good and he created bad but Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a choice to choose between good and bad Allah Azza wa Jal did not command us to do evil but he commanded us to do good and so this is something very important that evil it is not attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evil is not attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as has been confirmed in one of the azkar of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said biyadayk, this is the belief of the prophet that he says that all forms of goodness it all comes from you subhanahu wa ta'ala and evil 
is not attributed to you or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so this basically sums up our belief in Qadr predestination the next point which Sheikh Abdul Rahman brings he says um, وَإِيمَانُنَا قَوْلٌ وَفِعْلٌ وَنِيَّةٌ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَالطَّاعَاتِ فِيهَا تُقَيَّدُ فِيهَا نُقَيِّدُ And this is our belief with regards to Al-Iman. What is Iman? What is the nature of Iman? Is Iman just a statement saying La ilaha illallah? Is Iman just a belief in your heart? Or is Iman actions? Or is Iman all of these elements coming together? So he says in verse 25 وَإِيمَانُنَا قَوْلٌ وَفِعْلٌ وَنِيَّةٌ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَالطَّاعَاتِ فِيهَا نُقَيِّدُ فِيهَا نُقَيِّدُ And he says that our Iman Imanuna, our Iman, the Iman of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah He says it is قَوْلٌ It is a statement وَفِعْلٌ It is actions وَنِيَّةٌ and his intention, meaning belief in the heart. Min al khairi wa ta'ati fiha nuqayidu. He says, an intention of all things good and for acts of obedience, the intention we stipulate. And so, Iman, the reason why Allah Azza wa Jal created us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He brought us into existence. For this purpose, it is to believe in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to believe in Him correctly. And so what is correct belief? It is qawlun wa fi'lun wa niyya. It is the coming together of all three of these elements. Qawlun. Firstly, it is a statement. Meaning, it is a statement upon one's tongue. It is a statement upon one's tongue. To utter la ilaha illallah and to testify to this. Wa fi'lun. It is also an action. It is also an action. Part of Iman is to act. Just holding it as a belief and uttering it upon the tongue is not sufficient. But rather one also needs to act accordingly. To act according to the commandments and to abstain from its the prohibitions of Al-Islam. Wa niyya. And it is an intention. Meaning a belief in the heart. It is a belief in the heart. And so Iman is not just a statement without a belief in the heart. Nor is the belief in the heart without a statement. Nor is it action without belief. But rather it is the coming together of all three of these elements. A statement upon the tongue. Qawlu bil lisan wa tasdiqu bil qalb wa amalun bil jawari. As some other scholars have, have mentioned that it is a statement upon the tongue and it is a belief in the heart and it is to act according one's limbs and so what makes us Muslim is not just our names Muhammad or Fatima or Aisha all these beautiful names mashallah but we have no part of Islam in terms of our actions you know we just say Amanna we just say we believe in Allah and then we never ever do action Part of Iman, as we'll clarify, it is to do, it is to do actions as well. And this was the belief of the early Muslims. That all of the classical ulama of Al-Islam, they clarified this in great depth in their books. And why did they clarify this? They clarified this because certain sects and groups arose which said that Iman, it is simply Tasdiq. Just to believe in the heart and that is sufficient. This is the ayat of Iman. Just to believe in your heart. This is Iman and this is the reality of Iman. And once these sects arose, the scholars, the classical ulama of Islam, then refuted these claims stating that Iman is kawlu bil lisan, a statement upon the tongue. Wa tasdiqu bil qalb, a belief in the heart and to act accordingly with one's limbs. Sufyan so, al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the tabi'een, he said, كان الفقهاء يقولون لا يستقيم قول إلا بعمل 
ولا يستقيم قول وعمل إلا بنية ولا يستقيم قول وعمل ونية إلا بموافقة السنة. He said in explicit words, he said that the fuqaha, meaning the jurist of Al Islam, they said that actions or rather لا يستقيم قول إلا بعمل. They said that statements is not considered to be correct except with action. And they said ولا يستقيم قول وعمل إلا بنية. And actions and statements is not considered to be correct except with a niya ولا يستقيم قول وعمل ونية إلا بموافقة السنة and these things statements and actions and intentions it is not deemed to be correct except if it is in conformity with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so this is the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah with regards to Iman that Iman is a statement upon the tongue, a belief in the heart, and actions on one's limbs. Actions on one limbs, the one's limbs. Um, the next, the next uh, verse mentions, وَيَزْدَادُوا بِالطَّاعَاتِ مَعَ تَرْكِ مَا نَهَا وَيَنْقُسُوا بِالْعِسْيَانِ جَزْمًا وَيَفْسُدُوا طيب. So, another reality of Iman, is that Iman increases and decreases. When the scholars gave a comprehensive definition of Iman, they said Iman is kawlu bil lisan wa tasdiqu bil qalb wa amalun bil jawarih yazidu bil ta'ati wa yankusu bil ma'asiyah. They said that Iman, it is a statement upon the tongue, a belief in the heart, and to act accordingly with one's limbs. To see the effects of Al-Islam evident in one's actions. And then they added another restriction and they said يَزِيلُ بِالطَّاعَةِ وَيَنْكُسُ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ That Iman, the nature of Iman is that it increases due to good and righteous deeds and it decreases by way of sin and transgression. And this is what is affirmed in verse 26 when Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions وَيَزْدَادُ بِالطَّاعَاتِ مَعْ تَرْكِ مَا نَهَا وَيَنْقُسُ بِالْإِسْيَانِ جَزْمًا وَيَفْسُدُ It increases with acts of obedience while refraining from what he forbade مَعْ تَرْكِ مَا نَهَا Refraining from what he forbade وَيَنْقُسُ بِالْإِسْيَانِ جَزْمًا وَيَفْسُدُ and it decreases by disobedience with all certainty. We hold this as a belief and it becomes corrupted. So each and every single time the servant of Allah Azza wa Jal increases in obedience, his Iman increases. His Iman increases. And that is due to the fact that obedience, it is Iman. And it increases when one does good deeds. A person's Iman increases when they do good deeds and it also decreases um, due to sin and transgression and this causes a decrease in Iman. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, affirming that action is part of Iman. He said Al-Imanu bid'un wa sab'una shu'batan. He said that Iman consists of 70 some odd branches. فَأَفْضَلُهَا قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ the highest branch, it is the statement La ilaha illallah and executing what the statement means, meaning that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah Azza wa Jal and giving Allah Azza wa Jal his due right. وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاطَةُ الْعَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ And the lowest form of Iman, it is to remove something harmful from a pathway. And the Prophet ended off by saying وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ That having modesty. To be modest in your statements and your actions, it is part of Iman. And so Iman, it has many branches and it has many, many characteristics. And the more a servant increases in these characteristics of Al-Iman, his Iman likewise increases. Ma'atarki ma'naha, also leaving of those things which 
Allah Azza wa Jal forbade upon us, this also increases Iman. This increases Iman. Like doing those things which Allah ordered us to do increases Iman. Also, leaving off certain things also increases our Iman. What clarifies this to us is the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad uh, reported in Jami at Tirmidhi, when the Prophet Muhammad said, Min husni al Islam al Mar'i tarku ma la ya'ni. That from the excellence of one's Islam is that he leaves off that which does not concern him. That this is a way a person perfects his Islam, leaving off those matters which does not concern him. And the reason the Sheikh mentioned this um, over here is to prove that leaving off certain things also increases one's Iman. So if one's Islam is perfected by way of this action, um, it means that leaving off this matter, it also increases uh, one's Iman. It also increases one's Iman. So, Iman increases due to acts of obedience and likewise it also it also increases by leaving off disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Abdul Rahman also mentions وَيَنْقُسُ بِالْإِسْيَانِ جَزْمًا and it also decreases Iman also decreases uh, by way of sin and disobedience. Jazman meaning yaqeenan wa haqqan meaning there is no doubt in this matter that sins it causes one's iman to decrease and to become weak and this is something which we affirm the hadith in Bukhari where the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said لا يزني زاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن that when a person commits zina the person is not considered to be a true believer Meaning for that moment, Iman leaves him. وَلَا يَشْرَبُ الْخَمْرَ حِينَ يَشْرَبُهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ And when a person drinks alcohol, at that moment in time, the person's Iman leaves him. The person's Iman leaves him. وَلَا يَسْرِقُ السَّارِكُ حِينَ يَسْرِقُ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ No does a person commit theft. And while he commits theft, is he considered to be a believer. However, this hadith does not mean that this person is a non-Muslim. This hadith means that at that moment of time when this person commits that particular sin, a major sin, this person's iman leaves him. And we do not say, as the extreme sects say, that committing a major sin uh, causes a person to be expelled from the pale of al-Islam, something very important. So, وَيَنْكُسُ بِالْإِسْيَانِ jazman That uh, by way of sin and transgression, iman also decreases. Iman also decreases as a result of this. Um, a person came to one of the Salaf and they said, Al Imanu Yazidu Wayankus. They posed the question and they said, Iman it increases and it decreases. Um, and the question was in Ost Maziyadatu Wanuksanuhu what is its increase and what is its decrease? Um, this person, one of the Salaf then said, إذا, إذا ذكر, ذكرنا الله عز He said that when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through praising Him and glorifying Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is its increase. وَإِذَا أَغْفَلْنَا وَضَيَّعْنَا وَأَسَأْنَا فَذَاكَ نُقْصَانُهُ And he said that when we become heedless of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَضَيَّعْنَا And we leave it off وَأَسَأْنَا And we commit evil deeds فَذَاكَ نُقْصَانُهُ Then this is its decrease. This is the decrease of Al-Iman. Shaykh Abdul Rahman mentions وَيَفْسُدُ And this also it corrupts the Iman. It corrupts the Iman. Uh, the committing sins, it corrupts one's Iman. So in this line is a clarification that Iman, it increases and it decreases. It becomes strong and it becomes weak. And that the increase of Iman, they are means of achieving this. And likewise, um, its decrease, 
there are also reasons which cause um, one's Iman to decrease. So this um, line clarifies to us the belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah with regards to Iman, that Iman, it is a statement upon the tongue, it is a belief in the heart, and it is to act accordingly with one's limbs and the nature of Iman as believed by Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that it increases due to obedience and it decreases due to disobedience. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us perfect Iman bi idnillah wherein we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we ought to believe Him and we take towards those means which cause our Iman to increase and we abstain from those things which cause our Iman to decrease. We'll end upon this note, insha'Allah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.